the killers do the job. Now Lemieux gets it out to Orlov, he shoots, he scores! Dimitri Orlov with a goal scorer's goal on the breakaway, and it's 1-0 Carolina. That puck's interrupted, but Orlov's able to keep it in. Svechnikov, Orlov, he tees it up, he scores! A howitzer from the Bronco, and Orlov, a two-goal game and a 5-2 lead for Carolina. Welcome to the Canes Corner Podcast. I am Adam Gold, and boy, wasn't that a sexy third period. Hurricanes with a 7-2 win. Seven goal Sundays. That's what the Hurricanes give us. They gave it to us against Calgary uh, back at PNC Arena on Sunday. Just gave it to us again tonight as the Hurricanes beat the Ottawa Senators like a drum. Uh, Although, a little deceiving. Scoreline definitely flatters Carolina. It was uh, a clinical finish, if you will. Uh, I actually thought this was a very, very even game through two periods. Really was, to me. Uh, I thought 1-1. Carolina started the game off great. And then Ottawa finished the first period. I thought with the upper hand. Same thing happened in the second period. Carolina better early. Ottawa drew even. Maybe even should have had another goal. Uh, And then right at the end of the period, Carolina got back to it. The Ajo line, which was outstanding tonight. Sebastian finding Seth Jarvis back door, diagonal pass, gorgeous feed, goal, make it 3-2, 22 seconds left in the period. And then you you still knew it was going to be a third period game, right? One goal deficit doesn't really matter. Carolina, I mean, what, 25-2 and one with a lead entering the third um, Ottawa, I think four twenty four and three, if I'm not mistaken, uh, trailing entering the third. Those those numbers, of course, don't mean jack. But Carolina got the goal to make it four two. Then it was kind of over. Chatfield, Orloff, Gensel, Lemieux with the deflection of the burn shot. Those are uh, that rounds out the scoring. In the third period, incredible, uh, you know, on the on the goal, on the on the score sheet. Great performance for Carolina, but a game that could have gone either way entering the third. But this is what happens when you've got a really good team playing with confidence against a team that's trying to get there and maybe is still a little bit unsteady on their legs. I was a little surprised we didn't see a, a little bit more pushback physically from Ottawa in the third period. I thought we would see that because I think it's a team that plays with an edge. They didn't play with much of an edge tonight. I thought uh, maybe it's the second half of a back-to-back. I don't know. They didn't have travel. They beat the, uh, what was the, uh, the Islanders last night at home. No travel there. I was a little surprised. A little, uh, little shocked that we didn't see more pushback from the Senators uh, today. But such is life. Um, Obviously, a lot of things we're going to talk about. We'll talk about the blue line. We'll talk about uh, specific players on the blue line. We'll talk about different line combinations. uh, And we will uh, get to that right after I remind you that we're brought to you by the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. If it's for the exterior of your home, you can find us at the Aluminum, not us, find them at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. No place like it. Sammy Hanna and his crew do a great job. And... If I'm not mistaken, we have sound tonight. All right. Um, I know you're not going to believe this because I'm a technological idiot. But last night, for the regular podcast listeners, and to be fair, that is the overwhelming majority of you. So we can't lose sight of the fact that um, I don't even know what the percentage is. 95%? of the people who listen to this podcast do so like we all consume podcasts, right? Um, But there are obviously a number of you and I value them, value all of you, no matter where you are, Australia, Ireland, uh, let's see, um, Canada, Finland, wherever you are, uh, Virginia Beach, I value all of you, so uh, I'm not. I just want to make sure that you all know everybody feels loved. Um, but for the people who join us on YouTube right here, 
live after every Hurricanes game, and we're about 30 minutes earlier than I anticipated. So last night I had a uh, techni- te- technical technical issue that I could not tell until it was all over. Sometimes I read the comments, sometimes I don't. And if I had p- kept up with the comments earlier, I would have recognized the problem. I'm not sure I would have been able to do anything about it, though, once we get started. Um, but believe it or not, it was out of my own control. Now, that's over. We don't care anymore. Let's get right to talking about the game. And oh, by the way, yes, I am wearing an NC State shirt. Don't ever give up. Wolfpack, uh, congratulations on your ACC championship first in 37 years. All right, uh, let's get to the game. And um, again, talked about it briefly through two periods, pretty even. And then it was a Carolina Hurricanes show. So let's start with the blue line and Carolina getting uh, three goals today from the blue line and a whole bunch of points. Uh, Slavin and Burns had assists on the Lemieux goal. Um, Dimitri Orloff had four points, two goals, two assists. Jalen Chatfield had a goal and an assist. And now we're starting to see Carolina's blue line start to generate. Um, I, I still think there's another level for Burns to get to offensively. Uh, but nobody is complaining. Orloff and Chatfield has to be the best third defensive pairing in the entire NHL. Has to be. I mean, I don't, I, I can't rattle them off for you, but Vegas is probably the only team that competes, right? With Hannafin essentially playing on a third pair right now. Although, you know, they're probably their top four. Uh, which Hannafin is definitely part of, will probably lead them all in minutes. But Orloff and Chatfield as a third defensive pairing, that is pretty good. And this is why I gave Dmitry Orloff my first start, because it's not just, he's not just, you know, a third pair defenseman right now. Uh, He got power play time in the game uh, yesterday in Toronto. And he's, he's getting some power play time again, but he's also becoming a big part of Carolina's penalty kill. You know, they've got their core four. They use their top four for this, but all of their defensemen can kill penalties. They're all good. It's really impressive uh, how good Carolina, how deep Carolina's blue line has become. Uh, But Orloff, who is now, I believe, a plus six after today. We remember... When he was, what was he, a minus 14 at one point? Might not have been that bad. I don't know, man. He It was dreadful where he was at one point. I thought he was going to win the Masters. But he is now a plus six. Chatfield, I think, is a plus eight. Look, Jalen's been solid all year long defensively. It's taken Orloff a while to get to this point, but man, he has been very, very good. Uh, And while I still believe that there are better ways to spend $7.75 million, who's arguing right now, right? So you you have Orloff uh, for another year, gives you some freedom just in case uh, you can't bring back either Shea or Pesci. Gives you some cover. Burns and Slavin will be your top pair. I've, I've said this before. Carolina's second pair next year. Right now, if I was wagering, I would say it's probably going to be Chatfield and Orloff. And they'll be playing a lot more minutes than they're playing together right now. I mean, Chatfield's only getting about 14, maybe 15 minutes a game. Orloff's around 17, 18 of late. Um, Carolina's, they're blessed. Blessed on the blue line. And a little bit of cover just in case there's an injury with Tony D'Angelo when he drew in, <clears throat> played really, really well. So uh, Carolina Blue Line continues to be stellar. Uh, it was nice. The the Burns wasn't a Burns goal. It was a Lemieux goal on a tip. But he was just like, well, I've got it. Might as well just throw it at the net. He didn't really try to do much other than put it on frame. And that's what happens when there's a bunch of bodies in front. You can get a deflection, and it deflected off of something that Lemieux was either uh, wearing or holding. I'm not really sure. Uh, it did look like it changed directions to me right off the shot. Uh, not off the shot, but like on the way through. Uh, and 
might not have mattered. On Anton Forsberg, I don't think he ever saw it. Uh, but again, Orloff, Chatfield, as good a pairing as we're, uh, as I think, third pair as you'll find anywhere in the NHL. I thought Shane Pesci played great tonight, and they didn't get on the score sheet, but that's all right. Isn't necessarily your job to always get on the score sheet, but they were really good tonight. Uh, and I thought if you go back and you watch the first two periods, and I'll bet if you start counting the good plays that Slavin made to break up plays, to corral the puck under duress behind the net, to skate out of trouble. I mean, it's just silly watching him, how good he is. And I would say that one of the joys of being able to go to the games at home is to be able to watch Jacob Slavin do his thing. I mean, he's absolutely incredible. And it, he does it so smooth. There's, it, it just looks like there. It doesn't look like there's no effort because you obviously know that there's effort, but he just makes it look simple and routine all the time. Uh, to me, he, I gave him one of my three stars. We had four guys with a goal and an assist on the night, and none of them were my third star. I thought Sebastian Ajo was spectacular tonight, start to finish. Uh, that line was really good. And I wondered, and I'm trying not to uh, give you all of my thoughts at the same time, because that would be confusing. But I wondered when Rod was going to move Gensel. Eventually, Gensel was always going to play with Ajo. So for me, the third player on that line was always going to be curious. And for those people who have been listening to this or listen to me on the radio or whatever, or here or follow me on Twitter at a gold fan, uh, please give me a, give me a follow. Um, I've been saying for a while that I think it's time for two reasons to get stall Martin and Faust back together. And the first reason is I think that line needs to be your checking line. It needs to be, they they need to be the heavy line. And don't worry if they don't generate goals from their possession and forecheck. Don't worry about it. You'll get a few. Stahl will get a few. Martinook will get a few. Heck, Jesper Foss scored two overtime winners last year against the Islanders. So you're going to get them. Or maybe one against the Islanders, one against the Devils. Scored two overtime winners in the playoffs last year. You're going to get your goals. Don't don't be so concerned about putting a goal scoring element on that line when Martinuk's going to end up the season with probably fifteen. All right, Stahl's going to be about the same. Fost, I mean, who knows? I did. I I do have this question, and I do know that the 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 data is available, so I will seek it out. But I was otherwise occupied, like watching the game. Uh, shorthanded chance, Stahl to Fost. Is there a player in the NHL with a lower shooting percentage on grade A scoring chances than Jesper Faust? I, I mean, I just can't imagine it. I just can't. Because he gets plenty of chances to score. If Jesper Faust had, like, goal-scoring hands, he'd score 40. He has so many great chances to score. Um, but I thought... That that line is more effective. And also, it's time to get Seth Jarvis on the goal-scoring binge. Because we're looking at, we're going into the playoffs. And, you know, we're, what now, uh, 14 games away? Carolina just played their 68th game. So we're 14 games from the from the end of the regular season. And Ajo's going for the most part. He's not scoring a ton of goals. He's got 27. Um, 27, he's got uh, 72, 73 points. Um, we need Svechnikov to get going, scoring goals. But you've got Nature scoring goals, Ajo scoring goals. Uh, now Gensel, Kuznetsov's got two. Gensel got his first tonight. So Carolina's starting to crank up their offense, right? Uh, and I think we'd all love to see it five on five. 
We want power play goals, and the power play has been good. Power play was good tonight. It got a goal after the five-on-three expired. I wasn't crazy about the five-on-three. I think, like, at one point, you just got to shoot the puck. And, but they got the goal because Netsoff saw the net front from Nason and put it in. Um, so let your power play complement you. But let your five-on-five five offense drive you. And if Carolina can get their five-on-five five game to where it's supposed to be, heavy forecheck, and now you have this talent on the ice. Whew. Said this before. This is no disrespect to any other teams. Uh, I think there are uh, there's probably four teams in the East, and maybe a dark horse that could come out of the conference and make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. I think the Hurricanes and the Rangers uh, in the Metropolitan Division side. I don't see anybody else there that can get to the uh, Eastern Conference Finals, um, and probably Florida and Boston. I know. Uh, Boston could end up in front of, you know, Boston right now is in front of Florida, although Florida's got a game in hand and only one point in arrears. So uh, Florida theoretically win that game. You go, uh, you go back top, but the, uh, the, the lightning might be a little bit of a wild card there only because you've got Vasilevsky, you've got Kucherov and Stamkos and point and Hedman and, Sergachev, you've got you've got major weapons, but I don't think they're as deep. I don't think they're as good, and I think the only thing they could really do is muck it up for somebody else. For instance, if I were Florida, the last thing I would want is a first round matchup with Tampa Bay. The very last thing I would want is a first round matchup with the Lightning. Um, so Carolina, you, you, they need to make sure that Jarvis is a uh, a weapon, an offensive weapon, and he, I'm not saying he can't be that with Stall and Martinuk, but I don't think you get is exactly what you want to get out of that line with Jarvis on it as opposed to Fost. And at some point, that's just got to be your, we're putting them on your best players to shut their offense down. And when you do that, then you got three, on home ice, you'll have three scoring lines. And now, as I was just kind of, you know, I stretched it all out. I want to get back to the original point was, I didn't know who was going to play with Ajo and Gensel. My gut tells me that it will be Jarvis because I think Seth is giving them a little bit more than they're getting from Tara Vinen right now. On top of the fact that Jarvis and his, and Tavo is a great defensive player. I wonder how Tavo will take it if he's playing with Jack Drury and Steph Nason. Folks, if that's Carolina's third scoring line, that should be great in the postseason. And this is where Carolina should take advantage. And we've been looking for it for years. This is even before the Hurricanes brought in the likes of Gensel and Kuznetsov. But think about on home ice. Whoever you play on home ice. You're going Aho, Gensel, Jarvis, um, Kuznetsov, uh, Svechnikov, Nason, which, quick aside, that line is going to be super exciting and super frustrating at the same time. They're going to create tons of scoring opportunities. And I didn't love the puck management tonight. I didn't love it. I want more. I want better. But when they're on, oh boy, because that's going to be on home ice. They're going to see third lines and third defensive pairings. Either that or Carolina is going to wear out top four pairings with the first line and their third second scoring line because you know Stahl, Martinook, and Foss are going to be on uh, the other teams. Maybe not top line, but certainly a big scoring line. And there, it should create great opportunities for
before Kuznetsov, Natchez, and Svechnikov. And then Drury, the way he's been playing with Tara Vinen, or it could be Jarvis, but I think it'll be Tara Vinen and Nason. Man, they should generate offense. That's where Carolina can have a huge advantage, especially on home ice. And even on the road, I mean, good luck. Good luck. Um, so I think that's where we're going to get to. Uh, and I think Rod basically told told me, what, before the Calgary game, that at some point it'll be, is it Calgary? No, it was Florida. It was before the Florida, I, either the Ranger game or the Florida game. Uh, he told me that, yeah, at some point it's going to be Ajo we cancel. Uh, that was the whole thing. Uh, all right, a couple of quick things, and then we will uh, we will uh, get out of here on a Sunday evening. And we thank you very much. We, me, royal we, thank you for spending some time. Um, I don't know if the penalty kill can get any better than it is. I just don't know it. Um, the goaltending has been obviously very good. But the penalty kill is now 23 for its last 23. And there have been some good power plays that have run into Carolina's penalty kill of late. Florida's power play ran into it. The Rangers' power play ran into it. Albeit, I think that was a very low power play game. Uh, Toronto's power play ran into it. So it's not like Carolina's been uh, building up great stats against bad power plays. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, didn't Chicago, with the worst power play in the league, score twice? Columbus scored a power play goal. Carolina's actually gotten burned by some of the worst power plays. So, going into the postseason, and knowing that, for the most part, the exit has become because of other teams' power plays. We'll just say special teams, because Carolina's power play has not uh, contributed much to wins in the postseason. As long as the Hurricanes don't lose special teams, I'm not sure anybody other than Florida beats them in the East. As long as they don't lose special teams. But if Carolina wins special teams, yeah, we'll we'll see uh, who do you have coming out of the West? Vancouver, Winnipeg, Colorado. Vegas, Vegas is, I think, I believe the eight seed in the playoffs. They might be the best team in the West. I don't know. I mean, I don't know who's coming out of the West, but if, if the Hurricanes win special teams in the postseason, they're going to be in the Stanley Cup finals. That's to me, that's it. They can get there without winning it. But I think if they are, if they are plus in special teams, yeah, they're going to the Stanley Cup finals. Uh, penalty kill has been amazing. Power play getting a little bit better. It should be really good with Kuznetsov and Gensel on there. Uh, and we'll see what kind, kind of combinations Rod can uh, Rod concocts. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, really surprised to see Orloff. It's a little bit risky to have Orloff on the power play only because he's not a great skater. He's a good skater, but not great. And he obviously does not have a lot of speed. Brady Shea gives you a better chance to recover. Uh, on the blue line. And Shea obviously is a very good offensive player. Uh, but I think we're going to see a little bit more of Dmitry Orlov, especially with the way he is playing. Um, all right. I just want to get to a couple of, um, well, let me get to goaltending first, then we'll get to a couple of moments. Frederick Anderson, super solid tonight. This is four games in a row. Anderson has come back and just looked very, very steady. And we talk about the difference between he and Kachetkov. Uh, and I'm I'm going to talk with my hands for the people who are just listening to a regular podcast. Uh, but there is a baseline for both, for both Anderson and Kachetkov, whatever their baselines are. And I think that uh, their baselines are pretty similar. Maybe Freddie's baseline is slightly higher, right? Maybe slightly. But I don't even know if that is. I, you, I, I don't think there's much difference between the two at all. But Anderson's waves up and down variation from that line are not great. It's 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 almost straight line ish, right? I mean, you might have an occasional spike one way or the other, but it's almost straight line ish. Pyotr Kachetkov's 
have a little bit more variance. We have even within games, and we saw it against Toronto last night, and this will be good for the people who couldn't hear me last night, um, that Kachetkov was so, I thought, poor in the first two periods. Like, you're they're not bad goals, right? Breakaways are not bad goals to allow. But you're also allowed to stop one. And Kachetkov, while he made some good saves last night in the first two periods, I just thought he was he he didn't challenge. He was small in his net, bit on the first fake, and I think he made some of those goals easier than they needed to be. I didn't think it was a great night until the third period and until overtime, and I thought Kachetkov, to borrow from Trip Tracy, built a game. And then by the time we got into overtime, Kachetkov was great. And then we get into the shootout and Piotr had forgotten that he had been so bad on breakaways during the first two periods. And he stops Nylander. He stops Matthews. And with both of those, he was patient. He made them, he forced them to make the first move and he was solid and he closed it down, and then he pulled out the poke check against Max Domi, shut that down, then Gensel won it. But what we're seeing from Kachetkov is the maturation of a goaltender who has the ability to put bad things behind him. Granted, two Sundays, was it two Sundays ago or two, two weekends ago? Winnipeg, that was a bad third period. Now, he had help. But it was a bad third period for him. But, and then he had, they sat on, he had to sit on it for a week. His next game was against the Devils, and he was spectacular. So, it's it's really cool. Carolina with uh, with signing Spencer Martin to a, an NHL contract next year. He's not on a two way deal. It's an NHL contract, so it's a min- league minimum seven hundred and seventy five thousand. But. Carolina's got now three goalies under contract for next year. Now, I absolutely, completely assume that they'll keep all three goalies. You'll see Anderson, you'll see Kachetkov, you'll see Martin. That'll be the goalie trio. And what they'll do when they get a minor league affiliate, because they have to, is that they'll put Martin through waivers. I don't think anybody's going to take him. Because he's got an NHL deal, and he's really a two-way. He's really a, you know, uh, we call it in baseball, a a 4A player. Somebody basically is a, you know, a high-level minor leaguer, but not necessarily a great major leaguer. Not a good enough major leaguer to be a starter. Um, and I think Spencer Martin is a great third goalie. I do. I think he's a dynamite third goalie, and it gives you time uh, to get another goaltender in your system and give them more reps whether that's Yanni Peretz or not, or one of the guys that they've drafted recently, who knows? But um, Carolina's goaltending is pretty solid, but Piotr is showing you the maturity that he can be the number one. And I know the that people have said, well, Freddie Anderson gives them the best chance in the postseason. I don't know that that's true. I don't. And this is not a knock on Freddie at all. Freddie certainly is the safest option more than li- more you know more than likely but I don't know that he's the better option I think what Rod is doing now by letting the gold goalies rotate I think that's going to be the case going forward and I think who's ever better is going to get the gig whoever's better is going to get game one Auntie Ranta didn't start game one because Frederick Anderson was hurt last year Ronta got the first game of the playoffs and the first five games of the playoffs because he was flat better than Freddie down the stretch. And then Anderson came in and won game six against the Islanders, and that was that. But I absolutely think that Kachetkov has a chance to be the starter when when the whole thing uh, drops. Third weekend, the weekend, two weekends after the Masters in... April, right? Wait, where are you? Oh, moi, moi. Oh, I don't know where anybody is. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know where all where all you people are. Uh, I did start. Uh, I did start a little uh, a little early on this. So if you're just tuning in, I apologize. Uh, we were we were over so soon. There was no reason to not uh, to not go. All right, l- real quick uh, schedule as I go back to yesterday's sheep. Um, the Hurricanes are in New York to t- to take on the Islanders on Tuesday. Uh, New York's fallen on some hard times after winning. I believe they won six straight to get right in. They were actually at one point inside the playoff line. They had wild card two, uh, but they have now lost four in a row. They did get a point yesterday in an overtime loss to the Senators, but the uh, the Islanders are now outside the cut line. Then Carolina will come home Thursday and take on the Flyers. This is probably a last gasp for Philadelphia if they want any chance to finish second in the division, and I don't think that's going to happen even if Philadelphia comes in and beats Carolina. Uh, then the Hurricanes go to Washington, which should be an emotional game for uh, for Kuznetsov. I think it's also, is it is it Orlov's first trip back? Or has Carolina already been to Washington? I'm not sure. I, I think they have been to Washington once. Regardless, it's certainly going to be Kuznetsov's first trip back there. Uh, then the Canes come home to play Toronto, and then they go to Pittsburgh. It'll be Jake Gensel's first trip back there. So there's some uh, there's some emotional heartstring games coming up. Uh, but right now, the Hurricanes have one more homestand uh, of more than a game. Uh, they have one-offs, Philadelphia on Thursday, uh, Toronto, um, trying to think if that's, uh, no, uh, t- well, Toronto, I think on the weekend, and then, yes, Toronto, I think is Sunday at PNC Arena, and then the following Thursday, Detroit, and then they have a three-game homestand with Boston, Washington, and Columbus before finishing with four on the road. So at Boston, at St. Louis, at Chicago, at Columbus, end the season. So we're really down to our last 14 games here. Um, and I'm not talking about this in terms of what Carolina needs to do to catch the Rangers. We'll worry about that as you, when we get to the last handful of games and it's maybe it's a two point deficit or right now, right now, Carolina, uh, it's really up to the Rangers more than anything else. And I outlined this uh, a couple of weeks ago, if the Rangers uh, played reasonably well, and at that point, they had 17 games left. They've won 12 of 17, 12 and five would be reasonably well, not great, not bad. Then the Hurricanes were going to have to win. I think it was 15 out of 17. And the Rangers have won two in a row. Uh, that's why that game against the Rangers was such a big deal. If you wanted to win the division, and I'm not saying it matters that much, but if you wanted to win the division, pretty much had to win that one unless you're going to get a lot of help from New York and Carolina is done playing the Rangers. Uh, but that's Carolina's schedule the rest of the way. And I think you're going to see Rod alternate the goalies, you know, alternate Anderson and Kachetkov uh, as we get closer to uh, the end of it. Uh, all right. I am. Uh, we are out of here after a Sunday night, seven goal Palooza win over the Ottawa senators were brought to you by the aluminum company of North Carolina if it's for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Amlin Road in Durham. No place like it. Sammy Hannon and his crew do a great job. If you are uh, if you are so inclined, you need some exterior home improvements, check them out there. All right. With, uh, with all of that said, uh, if you missed any part of this, it is available wherever you get your podcast. Just give us a rating and a review. Well, you don't have to do that. You can listen to it without it. Uh, but if you subscribe to it, it shows up automatically wherever you get your podcast. Same thing with this right here. You can hit the subscribe button, the like button, however it is you do it. Caress it, uh, whisper sweet hockey nothings to it. Uh, and then you'll be alerted every time we get on here to do it. And I thank you very much for spending some time. And uh, I've had a good time. I hope you have. It's always easier when it's seven to two in favor of the good guys. And it's also always easier when you can hear what I'm trying to say. Don't you think that works when you can actually hear it? Hmm. Before we go, let me just close. Back to full strength. The penalty killers do the job. Alamu gets it out to Orlov. He shoots. He scores! Dimitri Orlov with a goal scorer's goal on the breakaway. And it's 1-0 Carolina. 
That puck's interrupted, but Orlov's able to keep it in. Svechnikov. Two. Orlov. He tees it up. He scores! A howitzer from the Bronco. And Orlov, a two-goal game and a 5-2 lead for Carolina. See you on Tuesday.